Sing a new song to the Lord, for he has worked wonders. In the sight of the nations he has shown his deliverance. Alleluia. We keep today the fifth Sunday of Easter and we hear in our Gospel the Lord speaking to us about the way in which he is the way, the truth and the life. And that to have seen him is to have experienced the love of the Father and to have seen his divinity. And so as we reflect upon that great mystery, we begin this liturgy by calling to mind our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Kyrie eleison. Christe eleison. Kyrie eleison. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, constantly accomplish the Paschal mystery within us, that those you are pleased to make new in holy baptism may under your protective care bear much fruit and come to the joys of life eternal. For our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. About this time, when the number of disciples was increasing, the Hellenists made a complaint against the Hebrews. In the daily dis uh, distribution, their own widows were being overlooked. So the twelve called a full meeting of the disciples and addressed them. It would not be right for us to neglect the word of God so as to give out food. You brothers must select from among yourselves seven men of good reputation, filled with the Spirit and with wisdom. We will hand over this duty to them and continue to devote ourselves to prayer and the service of the word. The whole assembly approved of this proposal and elected Stephen, a man full of faith and of the Holy Spirit, together with Philip, Prochorus, Nicanor, Timon, Parmenas, and Nicholas of Antioch, a convert to Judaism. They presented these to the apostles, who prayed and laid their hands on them. The word of the Lord continued to spread. The number of disciples in Jerusalem was greatly increased, and a large group of priests made their submission to the faith. The word of the Lord. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. Bring out your joy to the Lord, O you just, for praise is fitting for loyal hearts. Give thanks to the Lord upon the harp, with a ten-string lute sing him songs. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. The Lord looks on those who revere him, on those who hope in his love, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. May your love be upon us, O Lord, as we place all our hope in you. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. The Lord is the living stone rejected by men, but chosen by God and precious to him. Set yourselves close to him so that you too, the holy priesthood that offers the spiritual sacrifices, which Jesus Christ has made acceptable to God, may be living stones making a spiritual house. As scripture says, see how I lay in Zion a precious cornerstone that I have chosen, 
and the man who rests his trust on it will not be disappointed. That means that for you and who are believers, it is precious. But for unbelievers, the stone rejected by the builders has proved to be the keystone, a stone to stumble over, a rock to bring men down. They stumble over it because they do not believe in the word. It was the fate that was in store for them. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a consecrated nation, a people set apart to sing the praises of God, who called you out of darkness into his wonderful light. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. Alleluia. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If it were not so, I should have told you. I am going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am you may be too. And you know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. If you know me, you know my Father too. From this moment, you know him and have seen him. Philip said, Lord, let us see the Father, and then we shall be satisfied. Have I been with you all this time, Philip, said Jesus to him, and you still do not know me? To have seen me is to have seen the Father. So how can you say, let us see the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father, and the Father is in me? The words I say to you I do not speak as from myself. It is the Father living in me who is doing this work. You must believe me when I say that I am in the Father and the Father is in me, because it is on the evidence of this work, if for no other reason. I tell you most solemnly, whoever believes in me will perform the same works as I do myself. He will perform even greater works, because I am going to the Father. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The things people talk about tell you what's really important to them. Just think about conversations you overhear on the bus, or the conversations you might be having um, at this time through Zoom with your friends and relations. What are the things that people are going on about? coronavirus, obviously, but other things as well. Problems in their families, Brexit, other things. We externalise through words and language and conversation the things that lie in our hearts and minds. Now, one of the most important periods of the Church's life was the first few hundred years after the death and resurrection of Jesus. It was important because in that time the church worked out exactly what it thought about who Jesus was. It was an amazing period of discussion and debate and conversation. Accounts from the 4th century in places like Alexandria and Egypt tell us that people used to talk all the time about these questions. Who was Jesus? Was he God? Was he a man like us? How could Jesus be God and yet also be a created human being like the rest of us? In fact, there are accounts of barbers refusing to shave people they disagreed with, and even riots where rival groups of monks thrashed the living daylights out of each other as they debated these issues. Now, most of the arguments centred on ideas put about by a person called Arius. He said that Jesus probably was divine, but not quite as divine as the Father. If the Father really was in charge, 
then there had to be a time, even in the eternity of heaven, before Jesus was born, when the Father created or put forth Christ. Now, as the church grappled with these ideas, they often meditated on portions of scripture like the one that we've heard in our gospel reading today. What exactly does Jesus mean when he says, whoever has seen me has seen the Father? I am in the Father and the Father is in me. They seem quite simple statements, yet it's difficult to pin down exactly what Jesus means by them. And yet there's a strong sense that Jesus is one with the Father and equal to him. In Jesus, we see what the Father is like. Well, the church eventually came to believe that Aeris' ideas were seriously misguided. Christians believe that Jesus is God, just like the Father. Of one substance with the Father, we say. Father, Son and Spirit have always eternally been God, without any difference, hierarchy or change. Now there are many things one could argue being a Christian is about. Helping others, for example. Being part of a loving community. Finding meaning in life. But when all is said and done, those things, for as important as they are, don't actually form the essence of the Gospel. In fact, any well-meaning atheist could agree with every single one of them. For even in the secular world, there is worth in being part of an organisation which helps others, fosters a sense of community and gives meaning to life. The things that make Christians different is the fact that in Christ we know we have encountered God and that he offers to us who believe in him a sure and certain hope that we can live forever with him. Yes, there will always be much that we can collaborate with in secular society, with those we live with, with those of no faith, those of other faiths, and those who are actively hostile to faith. Charitable projects, seeking the common good, building cohesive communities, protecting the rights and dignities of all. But there will always be a little something that sets us apart from our world something which defines our identity and shows where our truest hope and trust is placed. For it is in Christ and in Christ alone. In no other earthly power, no other political creed, no other source of wealth or influence, in no other race or class or country or tribal grouping, our trust is in Christ alone. The way, the truth and the life. For to have seen him is to have seen the Father. Amen. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For as men and for our salvation he came down from heaven. By the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess on baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. In faith, hope and love, let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all Christians and for God's holy Catholic Church throughout the world. We pray for a deepening of our faith in Christ, who is the, the way, the truth and the life. Lord, hear us. 
We pray for our world and particularly for all those who are involved in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. We pray particularly for doctors and nurses. We pray for all those who are suffering at this time, that the Lord will help and guide them. Lord, hear us. We pray for our local community here in Kentish Town, for the common good of all. We pray particularly for our parish school, for all who teach and work and learn there. Lord, hear us. We pray now for any in particular need. At this time, we remember the housebound of our parish and all those who are isolating at this time. For any who are fearful or despairing, we pray that they will be given hope. Lord, hear us. We pray for those who have died, that the Lord may welcome them into his heavenly kingdom. We pray particularly for all who have died this week as a result of the coronavirus. Rest eternal grant to them, O Lord, and let light perpetual shine upon them. May they rest in peace. Amen. Let us now ask Our Lady, who is the health of the sick, to pray for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. God our Father, we ask you to hear these prayers and to grant them as may be most fitting in your sight. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, which you have given in human hands of men, who will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. God, who by the wonderful exchange effected in this sacrifice have made us partakers of the one supreme Godhead, grant we pray that as we have come to know your truth, we may make it ours by a wonderful way of life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you, and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. Through him the children of light rise to eternal life. 
The halls of the heaven and the kingdom are thrown open to the faithful. For his death is our ransom from death, and in his rising the life of all has risen. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created right to give some praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy, and you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, the pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance of your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Benedict and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis the Pope, with Justin our Archbishop, Jonathan our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have claimed for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, who glory and honour is yours, for ever and ever. Amen.
the Saviour's commandment formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, who graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will. Live and reign forever and ever. Amen. the true vine and you are the branches, says the Lord, whoever remains in me and I in him bears fruit in plenty. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Graciously be present to your people, we pray, O Lord, and lead those who have imbued with heavenly mysteries to pass from former ways to newness of life, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just um, a few notices uh, for St. Bennet's people. Um, uh, the Masses will take place this week, as usual, on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and they will now be uploaded to our YouTube page, where you can um, uh, 
uh, see them there. In addition, after the 11 o'clock live stream service, um, uh, through our Facebook page on a Sunday morning, uh, there's the opportunity for a Zoom coffee together. So uh, during that, you quite simply, um, after the Mass, go away, make a cup of coffee, come back to your computer, and then there's a Zoom meeting at 12 o'clock, and the link for that is in the parish email that's just gone out this week. In addition, on Wednesday evening, there will be Zoom evening prayer for anyone who wants to join us. That is followed by uh, a Zoom aperitif. So at the end of the office, you quite simply go away, pour yourself a drink, come back for half an hour of chat and catching up with each other. Um, and I think those are the only notices I can think of. So I hope you have a, a very happy uh, Sunday and that you uh, enjoy the warm weather of this uh, weekend and that you all keep uh, safe and sane.